Hello all, good morning, good evening, good afternoon for all those joining the webinar from different parts of the world. I welcome you all for the webinar for the day, Craft Your Digital Tomorrow with the best in business SAP support models. With me, I have Mr. Alistair Townsend, Finance System Director at First Group, our privileged customer. And I have Mr. Jagdish Balan, who is the business unit head and also uh, a veteran in delivery operations. And I am Param. I take care of the US operations and I'm a digital transformation advisor at Kartec. So we will start off with the webinar now and uh, hold your questions till the end. We will have a separate slot for the Q&A. So before we get on to the actual topic of operating models, uh, I would like to give you a perspective on how the IT spending or happens with respect within an SAP organization and what are the evolving priorities of an SAP organization as we talk. So the more spends are towards the digital core, the cloud applications, moving away from the traditional on-prem to the cloud, data analytics, digital transformation, I'm sure you should have heard this term day in and day out, and uh, having a single consolidated integration platform across and the operating model which will be needed to manage all of this. Enterprises that do not act quickly to develop innovative business models and a comprehensive strategy towards handling all these new evolving structures will fall behind the competition. So with this perspective, so I would like to uh, open up with few of the questions which uh, uh, being in an IT and an SAP organization, what you should be aware of. In the current SAP and the evolving digital trends, an estimated two out of three IT dollars are now being spent towards maintaining existing enterprise applications and technology. This is forcing SAP IT organizations to simultaneously control costs, reduce risk, and improve returns or TCO, and respond to the ever-changing needs of the business and market. In addition, the SAP services delivered must be of the highest quality or else cost saving can never be achieved. So what this means is there is a emerging uh, need for strong SAP operating model to be in place, which can seamlessly switch between the so-called edge to the core and core to the edge technology components that are rapidly evolving in any SAP digital organization. Considering the larger perspective, every SAP or IT organization should have answers to some of the key questions listed here, like is your operating model flexible to deliver technology at the demanding needs of the market? Have the capability to cater to uh, the SAP core versus the edge and the evolving digital transformations. Have you have the necessary business skill resources to undertake the, the technology priorities and portfolios of your company? And in turn, how are you going to deliver the return on investment from an SAP application and IT organization perspective? So considering this, um, what could be the potential key areas of improvements in terms of the workforce, the technology, and how you need a blended model which can collaborate both technology and workforce. Digital SAP platforms, as we talk, presents a unique IT challenge to any organization. Challenges in terms of client facing, the market is constantly changing, Technologies continuously evolve, be it uh, cloud, on-prem, uh, and, and uh, how it is changing, and the required technical skill sets that are difficult to come by. As a result, many organizations find themselves with a complex digital en environment that is difficult to manage and also costly to maintain. So having said all this, what could be the potential answer to this? So the answer to this could be having a best-in-class SAP AMS service model that is focused on driving sustained business value through speed, efficiency, 
and cost reduction across demanding digital solutions. Such models should also have the flexibility to accommodate the kind of uh, full stack people who can handle complex and evolving scenarios of customers. The operating model should also be geo-friendly, should, should, should also have skills across multiple geographies and ensure the clients are taken care with respect to a large pool of multi-skilled technology consultants available. So if you choose such a model in place and have it running in, in your IT organization, then you can give it give the value in terms of the OPEX spend from an IT organization. So in line to this, what we have done or what we have evolved over the over the last decade or so in terms of our AMS and uh, service delivery framework, we have come with a service delivery model and a framework which offers a proven cost-effective way for companies to rapidly stabilize their enterprise solutions and transition into application optimization and innovation. The key to this framework, which we are going to talk today, is cost, efficiency, resource optimization, quality, continuous improvement framework, agility, and innovation. So this framework we are which we are going to talk about or which we have already offered, and one of our customers who have joined today's call is also going to talk about how we gave this kind of framework to them to effectively blend the workforce and technology together. So what we offer is we help to cut through the complexity with an integrated one-stop shop service model. I repeat, one-stop shop service model, which can take care of any of the required capacity needs and the technology across. Interoperability of resources is the key here. Interoperability meaning the resources between the on-prem and cloud versions in all areas of core and edge is one of the key success. For example, having multi-talented skills across Ariba and MM, for example, Ariba and field class, HCM and uh, success factors, CPI and uh, PI. So basically the blend of on-prem and the cloud, if it, you need not have to search for multi-skills for that one skill managing both the edge and the core. So if we have that, our digital application and maintenance service framework allows that and offers the right technical, functional, and design talent, you would effectively need to manage your digital platforms across. And having said all that, um, let me ask a question to Mr. Jagdish, who being a veteran in offering innovative operating models, uh, can you elaborate on what kind of managed service models you have designed or evolved to help your customer SAP organizations to perform in a better and efficient way, despite the dynamic changes um, in terms of the platforms and the trends. Over to you, Jack. Thank you, Param. Um, that was a clear explanation of how service model um, should 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 evolve on what parameters. Basically, we have chosen the model workforce and technology framework uh, as a backbone of what we call it as a five pillar service delivery model, where we define a BAU workforce value adds, continuous improvements and innovation are those five pillars. So this purely comes from the experience that I personally have and as a, an organization, we have been serving customers uh, across different modules in SAP, uh, different streams, different uh, business verticals. And this uh, carve out of the five pillar approach has come from purely the experience base. And if you see over the past uh, 12, 13 years, I've been working in day in and day out uh, with this kind of service delivery support with the customer uh, directly. So this uh, approach of five pillars, I'm, I'm going through one by one, first being the business as usual support. Uh, over the years, what we have been seeing with 
the regular system implementation implementers is mainly the uh, framework support and contract agreement where the customer is bound with a certain number of hours FTEs when it comes to an AMS engagement there are fixed terms and contracts whereas like over the time uh, the world is uh, moving more in an agile way this framework agreement is not going to help the customer for a longer run whereas what we have uh, decided um, few years before to go with a flexible tailor-made approach when it comes to AMS support engagement where customer have the ability to pick and choose different options add-on services workforce models uh, and the innovation stuff that we are offering that's that's the core of what we offer as an AMS support uh, when it comes to flexibility uh, in terms of the number of years and FTEs we also offer flexibility towards the onshore, nearshore, offshore model, especially with the COVID time. Uh, for the past three, four months, well, um, the way of working has been changing. Uh, more work from home, less, um, very less uh, to a fact across all the countries. Of, uh, very less support, on-site support, has been taken care of. so it's all offshore driven model is going on so having that into consideration uh, having uh, supporting the customer across geographies like us uk and the eu uh, we define this model with a strong governance and pmo uh, team backing up way back so that's predominantly on the bau side when it comes to workforce yes any success of any support engagement or any customer engagement when it comes to SAP, uh, that needs a specific set of skills. Uh, and, and we believe in having, selecting the consultants under very stringent uh, criteria where we only have consultants, a certified consultant, both in on-prem and cloud solution with involvement of on-prem to cloud being um happening over the years and and the future being more of more and more of cloud solution come into picture so our consultants are certified we are ensuring that they have prior experience in handling western customers especially to handle uh, the lingo the, the the sense of business um the the understanding the customer needs is something very crucial is what we believe so choosing the workforce is very critical and uh, very important uh, when we go for an AMS support engagement. Of course, with uh, a defined contract, um, what we can also offer here is a flex pool of resources where when there are peak load times, like a payroll run, for example, a monthly uh, financial run or a yearly run, should all be compensated with the additional flex pool resources. So whenever there is a spike in the need when there is a rise of tickets, always this flex pool uh, of resources will come in handy and support the system. As a value add, uh, we also focus and give the customer an additional option to give a certain bucket of um, change requests can be managed along with the support. And many projects can also be accommodated along with the support. Yes, so this will remove the hassle of customer being running around with uh, different approvals, raising more documentations for commercials and getting it approved. So this will come in handy for any small changes based on the growing business needs. Uh, of course, uh, along with the changes in the business process, uh, we also take care of uh, SAP cloud patching process, be it quarterly or halfly when it comes to s It's an yearly upgrade, um, things like HR, uh, support pack upgrades that has to happen every year because there are changing guidelines example hmrc guidelines in uk have been changing every year so these demands are something that we understand clearly we have experienced clearly we uh, clearly see the need of why this has to be done on time to time when it comes to uh, an implementation of a support project so we will definitely help that as part of our support engagement Roadmap analysis, yes, we have a team of uh, 
center of excellence and uh, the practice for each of the stream each of the business stream so their job is to work with um, the customers and do a roadmap analysis at least for a three to six months uh, once in three to six months we've been doing this analysis and assessment exercise to ensure that we support the right system and any uh, any hurdles any bottleneck that we see on the way to uh, for the business or any additional improvements that can be done that can, that will be captured in the assessment and suggested to the customer when it comes to com continuous improvement obviously any uh, support engagement can be successful only when there is a, a reduction of number of tickets by i mean obviously the reduction can only happen by understanding the gaps in the system of course the implement during the implementation time uh, we wouldn't have um, the the foreseeing factor to cater all the business pro process to configure in the system whereas support engagement will clearly give an idea by the time the business users will be adapted to the system and they will demand more and more requirements to help running their business effectively so this uh, ticket volume reduction by understanding the root cause and problem statements will definitely be helping here so that's the continuous improvement that we will start doing it once we get settled in, into a particular ams engagement of course the gap analysis and periodic periodic system stability check is something we wanted to have in control uh, during the course of our support engagement uh, to run the support very smoothly to reduce the number of tickets that is coming in um, during the during the support phase innovation yes smart innovations uh, are the need for every industry these days and um, chatbots and rpa um, are going to help us in this area and we invest more as a company and uh, we support all our ams customers by reducing the manual steps in whatever the business process that we see it can be possible so uh, we are working together with the customer on the areas of improvements where we can introduce the uh, rpa automation and where we can show our improvement to our innovation and the capability we have go on for yeah so when i talk about the five pillar approach uh, there is something as a backbone which is serving this five pillar where we call it as our own practices for the individual streams that you're seeing here so when i say practices uh, we defined our practices into five various uh, sites where we take s4 digital core as a um, main core area for sap transformation these days so s4 system upgrade and conversion is being our specialist area we have done more than 30 35 implementations so far and uh, of course with any customers who are still with ecc we are doing the readiness check assessment exercise as well but coming back to s4 digital core implementation that's predominantly the focus and uh, the, the 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 plan that we have for for the years to come and when it comes to cloud adoption uh, of course all the customers are moving slowly into cloud uh, so when we typically get into a customer landscape we have a mix of both on on-prem and cloud together uh, we are very well experienced in this especially in the areas that you see here success factors ariba uh, be it ivp as for public cloud analytics concur c4c uh, cloud platforms so these are uh, the areas where we have been working with companies uh, for the past five years um, we have been successfully implemented so many projects with them and supporting them till today uh, where uh, the key element of any on-prem and cloud um, landscape is the integration where we we manage customers support like um, yorkshire water for example the biggest utility companies in uk one of the biggest in uk 
uh, and um, company like Univer, a uh, chemical distribution company, uh, first group, the transportation major. So all these companies have complex integration setup where they want to go for uh, additional cloud implementations and they are also having on-prem. So this is where our consultant expertise come in handy, where we blend the technology and integration together, where our consultants are very well experienced in ABAP CDS, which is predominantly the S4 HANA uh, way of latest uh, coding mechanism. Uh, when it comes to integration, right from the start of uh, process integration, uh, where it's been the traditional integration tool with SAP, and until now, the cloud integration platform, uh, CPI coming into picture, where we have successfully implemented uh, this integration services with so many customers, and we are having a lot of expertise in this area, and we know in and out of the issues that will happen in a typical platform like this. Of course, with uh, the evolving technology needs, uh, some customer may have Boomi as Dell Boomi as an integration platform, although it is not SAP. Uh, we still support uh, MuleSoft uh, because it's it's a blend of the latest technology. That is something that we have our vision uh, focused, and we would like to uh, um, do more projects on that area because we have the necessary expertise. Analytics. Yes, SAP, Analytics Cloud, VPC, Business Intelligence are the core areas of our support as well. So when I say these are the practice teams evolved and this has been um, defined as a structure in our um, offshore team base where individual practice that you see here uh, will have a practice lead and an APL where, where they directly be in touch with customer time to time and provide the necessary solution and help the customer to go through any business needs in a more, much more easier fashion. Right, so when it comes to AA and ML, um, of course, we, as part of the support activity, we have a lot of conversation with our uh, customers these days uh, where the expectation is more towards the automation where ML and RPA strategies are very much in line. We have done it for many customers. Example, the finance payment uh, automation process, uh, the payment run being run end to end, uh, support chatbots are, are some of the examples that we have been uh, implemented with our customers. Uh, when we come up with some kind of um, thought process, uh, we always share a kind of ideas with the customer uh, center of excellence team or the IT team, we show them the proof of concept and we'll take the idea, evaluate and bring that to the actual implementation. We don't need any bigger plans for implementing this. It's just a kind of discussion and then we are more agile in doing uh, more into automation area. And that's, that's one of our predominant strategies going forward. Of course, with platform, and intra basis GRC and security support in SAP stream. Uh, we've been doing this for years and years now, and we are master in this. Uh, be it system performance, system logs, daily maintenance, archival, uh, database management, disaster recovery systems, release upgrade, like I said, about the patching, the quarterly, uh, halfly patching for cloud systems, and also the S4 uh, systems, any upgrade, that will always be part of the support activity that we'll do. So we are pretty much comfortable in the space. Yeah, so we we briefly discuss about the uh, model workforce and technology, uh, the service models that we offer in line with that, and the underlying practice structure that helps. And now, uh, what else? The ROI, return on investment that the customer is making on us. Uh, how are we going to give the year-on-year -year savings for the customer that have uh, planned to go for uh, future uh, roadmap in SAP? So year one, what we, of course, like any support engagement, we do the transition rather than being 
dependent on the KT sessions and the documentations, we believe in our own experience of handling such system. So our consultants can straight away get into the system, understand the business process configured, find out the um, loopholes, gap analysis, raise it to the customers. These kind of exercise, we have done it uh, with, 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 with a recent customer called Yorkshire Water. We have done it with previous other customers as well. So we are very much familiar with this transition approach and we can definitely take it from uh, the tier one vendors of the world. Uh, so that's what we've been doing so far. And we are very confident in our consultant's ability uh, to navigate through the system rather than depending on the documentation and KT session. We are very well equipped in taking this in a more, more agile way because we understand the documentation would have been not updated or the KT is not might not be necessarily cover all the areas. So we are we are very much uh, equipped in, in such process. With, in terms of continuous improvement, yes, we, we started seeing the uh, gaps right during the support phase. It's just not only resolving the tickets, it's all about uh, bringing more value into the system. The only way to bring more value is to do improvement and reduce the number of tickets uh, into the uh, uh, support phase, especially bringing values and improvements to the business process will hugely complement here. And that's what our primary aim be. Um, yeah, so we will start that from the initial days of our engagement itself. And improvements will compensate with innovation, of course, with more and more of automation coming into picture. We have taken the strategy with the RPA. Uh, obviously the improvements will be much more uh, rapid and we take out the manual dependency of handling things. Example, the payment run mechanism that I've said. Uh, when it comes to innovation, over the period of time, we would like to focus more and more on the innovation side of things for the uh, customer to grow as a company, we, for us to grow along with the customer we would like to see what the customers see as a roadmap and we travel along with them in the S4, S4, SAP S4 transformation journey. And innovation is, is the only way to expand more and more. And we will definitely put our mind and thoughts more into innovation area once when we have the stable system up and running. So that's the uh, year on year saving percentage that you can see here. One term. So with all these uh, models and uh, workforce and technology, um, we have been serving the customer um, called First Group Transportation Company, the biggest uh, transportation company in UK. Uh, we have been serving them for about more than 18 months and we would like to pass it on to Mr. Alistair to hear about our experiences. Thanks, Jake. Um, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, or good morning, wherever it may be. Um, I'm Alistair Townsend, the first group, um, and I am here to pass on the customer experience for a car customer, just to share with you our experience. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. I've been uh, working in the UK transport sector for over 30 years, uh, initially employed in finance, but some 15 years ago, I decided to um, join the application support team, primarily supporting finance systems, but also all related systems. Um, prior to moving to First Group, my main experience was with Oracle applications, but I moved to First Group some three and a half years ago to uh, work on the team to manage the implementation of SAP S4 to replace an existing system. Um, a little bit of background for First Group, if anyone doesn't know about us. Um, founded in 1985 as part of a management buyout as part of the UK bus industry decentralisation. Um, they've grown considerably since that time with a number of acquisitions of UK bus companies, but also in the late 90s, early 2000s into the US. Um, I'm not sure the exact year, but they acquired First Student towards the end of the 90s. Uh, which operates the majority of the student buses across the whole of North America. Uh, around about this time, 
the group also ventured into the UK real franchise market and continue to this day to operate them um, in this area. In 2007, the group acquired more business in the US, Greyhound Buses, which I'm sure everyone's heard of, and also First Transit. So at this time, um, the group have over 100, no, at this time, I think the group have got over 100,000 employees across the UK and America, with revenues of over 7.1 billion pounds in the last year. We either operate, manage, or maintain around 50,000 vehicles, and I'm reliably informed we've carried around about 2.2 billion passengers in the last year, and uh, we are currently the largest bus operator in the UK. So that's a little bit about the background of First Group. Um, as I said, I moved to First Group about three and a half years ago as part of the team to implement a, a replacement of their legacy finance application uh, that they'd had in place for around about 20 years. Um, after reviewing various options, First Group selected um, S4 HANA with a Fiori front end as their replacement system. We can move on now, Pram. So well, this is our experience. So the group chose to host um, host applications within the HEC data center in Germany. That was to minimize the requirement for internal technical resource to support the infrastructure, but also to uh, allow us to focus on the, um, the application development. Um, we implemented with a, a, a SAP partner based in London, um, and the, the project itself took around about 15 months. We went live in April 2018 with what we call a vanilla system. Um, by that I mean we had minimum customizations. Uh, this was in part to speed up the implementation process, but also we wanted wherever possible, possible to adopt the SAP standard. Um, Towards the end of implementation, we uh, we put a tender out for an AMS support partner to, to work with us um, in the early years. And following a, a tender process, we uh, we um, engaged with another key SAP partner. Um, this was based on the tender, not, not just on price, but also knowledge, expertise of the uh, support systems and the in infrastructure and support behind that. Um, so our experience, however, was was not what we expected. Um, we'd been through the process. We could see the um, the expertise was there, but what we did find, we're going with a large organisation, was that the support that we were being offered was very impersonal in nature. All of the issues seemed to be managed by online ticketing and updates. Uh, we had very little direct contact with the consultants, and. Um, more, moreover, there was little continuity with the consultant, so we never knew who would pick up the tickets and when they would be picked up. Um, this led to a delay in, in resolution of a number of issues, of which we had a, quite a few as we were early adopters of Fiori. Um, we, didn't um, we found that the support partner didn't have any clear understanding of the first group business process. And by that, I mean they were very regimented and would follow um, the SAP standard solution for everything and uh, very little consideration was taken um, of the local processes that, that veered away from SAP standard. Um, and I'm sure every business has some process that doesn't follow a standard um, somewhere down the line. That everyone has the, the little niche, no matter how standardized you, you try to be. Um, so, what's, um, Whilst we acknowledge that we should be going for a, um, a SAP standard, we, we do know there are areas where it's business specific, but this didn't seem to be accommodated. As a result, we found that users were, were resorting to, no, back please, Pram, thank you. Um, as a result, we found that a um, number of our users were, were adopting off-system workarounds. Um, by that, there were, um, there were um, spreadsheet solutions, email solutions, and that's not what we wanted to get the best out of our system. Um, but we found that because of the, um, the, the support that we received and because it was um, so distant and personal, because it wasn't taken into consideration the, the, the individual needs of first group users, and that less issues were being raised by the users and they were relying on these workarounds and we weren't getting the best out of the system. 
none of this help with the, uh, the buy-in or user acceptance of the new system. We also um, were, were looking to our partners for advice and discussions um, uh, on the way forward and, and what, what was the best solution. As an organisation new to SAP, we were looking for the, uh, the guidance on future development from the experts. Um, however, this is not what we really experienced. Uh, what we did get were answers uh, to questions that we asked, or maybe sometimes a document or a link would be provided to specific questions. But um, our experience was that we had to know the right questions to ask to get the, um, to get the, the right answers back. Um, we were looking more for something where we would work with the, the partner and they would bring their expertise to the table so that we could make more informed decisions. Um, that wasn't necessarily the case. Um, the last comment I've got on there is the lack of ownership, and that was because we had the, um, the infrastructure supported by the SAP HEC team in Germany, but we had the application support, and there was grey areas there sometimes as to where the responsibility fell, and it was very, very difficult sometimes to, to get the, the, the support partner to talk to the HEC team uh, and, and iron out exactly where whose responsibility it was and who was going to resolve these things. The onus was very much on First Group to make all the suggestions and decisions as to who would be uh, responsible in, in what areas. And uh, we found that was um, a bit of an issue. But as, as you can see at the bottom there, what it felt like was that the relationship was one of a, a service provider rather than a partnership. So we needed a new approach to look forward and we needed to, to think about how to pick our next partner. Uh, we needed to find somebody who we could work with, not just about numbers, about expertise, but it's about working together. And that's what we were looking for. So we want to try before we buy. And we reached out to a number of SAP partners. Um, Carl was just one of these and, and wanted to start work on a number of mini projects. So um, it would not only help with systems de development, but would also allow us to get to know the way that the partners would work and would respond to us. So CAR started off with um, um, a number of mini projects, um, particularly in the area of BW report and customizations for our procurement team. And we also had a niche business, have a niche business, who look after insurance in the UK of the uh, bus and rail um, business. Um, they had a particular um, manual processed by taking out of their own specialist system uh, and they spent a lot of time and hours converting data to be allowed uh, to enable them to upload it to the finance systems so car came in to review that process and they created import routines to to load and con uh, convert the data directly from the files exported from the source system and that saved a significant amount of time particularly at period end so uh, with that in, involved, um, we also found that they weren't just there as developers on site. They actually um, saved us uh, considerable effort with those projects, but they were also on hand to listen to the, um, the concerns and issues raised by users. And they were there happily and readily to uh, offer advice in other areas of, um, of SAP. Um, they assisted with some uh, long-term um, tickets that the previous partner um, had failed to resolve, partly due to their um, distant um, distant approach to resolving the tickets. So, car were then seen by users as um, uh, experts in the in the field, but somebody who was there to actually respond to their queries and concerns. So, user confidence grew um, as they saw issues being addressed. And um, when it came to the time where we were looking to um, uh, renew our EMS support contract rather than renew we uh, we worked with CAR and um, and they took on that functionality for us. So what's our experience with working with CAR as an EMS support partner? Well first and foremost the ticket response and turnaround time has been significantly improved. Um, it's hard to compare because the previous partner didn't have so many tickets raised there was that lack of confidence but what we are seeing is um, um, some long-standing tickets for the previous partner were resolved by car when they first took us on. And the majority of tickets are resolved in a very timely fashion. Some even resolved on the same day. Um, this is not something we'd previously experienced. Um, this, despite being a, 
a significant increase in the number of tickets being raised due to the user confidence, knowing that they, their issues would be um, um, dealt with and resolved or, or queries would be answered. Um, that was the first and most uh, the primary uh, uh, gain that we saw. But we noticed that they've got a team of experts in um, in all areas at CAR. Um, what we found was that in the previous partner, um, they had a team, but they would bounce tickets between each other. But within CAR, they've got the expertise and all-round expertise, but if it's not a functional issue, it's a technical issue, they don't bounce the tickets between them. They work together to resolve the issues. And that that's, that's um, been seen on many occasions where it's a, a consolidated approach and you can see the team coming together on the tickets um, to, to give us a quick resolution of areas across all areas. Um, consultant flavour. Um, this, uh, this was trying to, to point out the, uh, the area where previously we saw only SAP standard solutions being offered. Uh, I think that the car team are more of a consultant nature. They understand that um, while standardised is, is um, the, the best way forward, they also understand that there are business specific processes and customisations that need to be accommodated. Um, so they they give us a solution that will meet our needs, whether it be a standard solution, whether it be a custom solution, or whether it be a mix of both. But they will work as as cons in a similar way to implementation consultants to get the to get the answer to get the um, the resolution. Um, Adherence to governance. Um, we um, always get advice from CAR and the team as to what we need to do to progress the system, to update the system, to, to ensure we continue with support, fully supported, and uh, and we're offering the best solution to our users. Um, that advice is, is continual. Um, we don't have to go and ask for it. We don't have to know the questions to ask. They come to us. Um, we work together. So that's great. Um, the, the next point on there, uninterrupted business continuity support. I put that on there because um, we've had a couple of um, uh, key areas where uh, we couldn't have done without CAR. Um, unfortunately, at the end of 2019, we had a major systems incident um, that left this system unavailable to users. And whilst CAR were not at the time our um, official AMS partner, the team thems made themselves available and to support the first group applications team wherever possible. In fact, it was they who identified the issue early. They work with first group, they work with the HEC team on the resolution, and we had minimal downtime um, to the um, end users, and we lost no data, which, which was um, all credit to them. Um, they also played a key role in the recent basis upgrade that we've uh, had to um, go through. Um, they've been with us through all of this. The, the, hello? Can you hear? Um, they've been through this with all of us, uh, all the way through, through the planning stage, and they uh, helped to implement the, the changes, um, resolve any issues, and they've supported us ever since we've gone live. I'm not sure we would have been there had it been to um, uh, a different support partner. And finally, the, the support is personal. I think I've been through this before. We're not just at the end of a, a ticketing system. We are discussed on a regular basis, whether it be calls, Zoom calls, emails. Um, at any time, we can discuss an issue. Uh, we don't have to raise a ticket and wait to see who'll pick it up. Uh, whereas, um, one, one last thing to point out on this is, whilst we did previously have a mix of on-site and offshore support, COVID-19 came in and impacted that it has not impacted on the level of support that we've uh, received from CAR. So just quickly on the next slide, Param. Yeah, so just quickly, um, CAR have developed with First Group, as I've said. We've moved forward from projects to be our, our key EMS support partner, and I would stress it, it is now a partnership. And they provide functional support, provide technical support but importantly they also offer advice which helps with the decision making and future planning process. They do continue to work with us on additional projects and um, one of those is um, that I recently worked on was uh, integration with Info EAM but they will help us to develop and improve the system going forwards and we continue to work with them on opportunities for automation process improvements. 
that's sorry, I probably overran my time. That's a quick introduction from a customer experience, but it's been a very positive one as far as first group being concerned. I'll pass over to Jake now, who can actually explain the um, the um, support model. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. That was uh, very much narrative. Thank you so much for all the support that you've been trying so far. Uh, yes, so this is the typical example of how our framework and model and the practice setup that I've been talking about been helping for a customer like Buzz Group to reach from a stage where uh, they have some support that was not helping. And after they found car technologies and we've been supporting, which is very much in line with what the business needs are. So we ultimately want, want to see what the customer business needs are and work in line with the customer. Of course, we are working ahead with various future projects with First Group as a customer. Thank you so much, Alistair. Over to Param. I hope you both- Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alistair. Thank you, Mr. Alistair. Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, from from the discussions uh, uh, from the summary which Alistair gave, and if I have to summarize, the SAP IT organizations are uh, looking at innovative methods to extract maximum business value from their existing SAP landscape and services with demanding user expectations uh, ever increasing technology complexity cost pressures across um, uh, after the covid organizations definitely have to look out for a partner who is an expert in technology domain r d and who can offer the services across and who can supplement it with the right skill uh, what we talked about in terms of edge and core and uh, innovations and automations and and the other stuff so considering that most of the organizations are therefore doing away with traditional support models so primarily i will uh, take and um, explain what param wanted to talk here See, basically, when you choose uh, an AMS partner, it should, I mean, along with the knowledge expertise, uh, there should also be cost and coverage that you should look for. Uh, the flexible working models that I've explained before, uh, the, the level of flex pools and the uh, CRs and mini projects, the, the patching ability that I was talking about, the reliable support framework, whatever the experience that Alistair was citing about, um, you need to have the reliable people and you have to have day-to-day -day interaction with them to have your support and SAP implementations successful. So that is uh, one of the uh, criteria to choose. Effective support transition. Um, yeah, like I said, transition have a lot of abilities, not only uh, just as a transition from one vendor to other, it, it involves the skills, it involves the uh, deep dive understanding of the business, how uh, especially the uh, specific vertical business runs and what is the specific need. Optimization factors, yes, with, with the growing needs of uh, the business uh, demands and what is required uh, to, to continue with the business expectations, optimization factors play a major role. Automation factor, like I said, RPAs and the trending technologies are something which are very keen. A customer or a partner before you choose, when they have a focus and uh, uh, the thirst of investing in technology, investing their time and money into technology is something as a partner uh, that you should look for. And also a strong governance model, SLA adherence, is some kind of experience that you should look for, whereas uh, when there is a strong governance and quality mechanism, there will be successful projects uh, that will be implemented. So all these have to blend together and form a complete combination when you choose the right partner. Uh, obviously, 
that is something that the car technologies can provide as a service. So right, uh, so with this, I'll open, we have 10 more minutes. And so primarily uh, we as, uh, as a support partner, having predominant experience into AMS, uh, especially in the Western geographies, we have been supporting customers uh, like um, First Group, Yorkshire Water, uh, Yorkshire Water Utilities, um, David Brown Engineering, First Solar. Uh, so all these are uh, predominant customer who have started or started working with our um, ECC and ESCO space, and we are working with them for the past three to five years. Uh, along with that, uh, with so much of experience around uh, AMS. Um, and S4 implementation and support expertise uh, with the evolving uh, trends in S SAP S4 upgrade and the cloud technologies, I'm sure we should be the right choice for AMS support as partners. Oh, I'll, with this, I'll open the forum to QA, um, so where you can post your questions. I've got a question from Chris. I'll call this out. What specific innovations you have carried out uh, in your current support engagement? Um, with, with, um, right. So there was a scenario that uh, the aut the payable payment run have to be automated, where we have used the RPA strategy to automate the payment run. That's one example, and uh, we have used chatbots in our uh, service. Uh, mechanism where a few of our L1 queries will be handled by the chatbots. Uh, example like roles and authorizations uh, for any new users creation, especially in the GRC and security area. That's something that we have implemented in a support engagement. Um, and also one thing I remember it's more on the vendor invoice management where the customer emails with attachments be read by the chatbots, uh, the bots, and it'll be converted uh, to an invoice document. So that that is another example of uh, the kind of automation using RPA that we have been doing with the customer. I'll move on to the next question. Is your models industry specific? Some specific industries might have weightage in few modules of SAP utilities. How are you managing those? Are your models flexible for those? Yes, definitely. Uh, I can give you one example. Um, so when it comes to utilities, um, I've cited the value additions being the minor CRs and um, uh, the many projects. There were some gap analysis we we have identified uh, between the integration between a uh, typical invoicing process system and their um, uh, ariba basically so uh, we we had to go for minus years of course with few kind of um, uh, you know, gap analysis that we have done, we took that into further conversation, in technology conversation with our internal center of excellence team, and we were arrived at a solution. Uh, we had to implement this at, at that particular solution. We took about, you know, uh, six Mondays for us. This was taken as a part of the support engagement where the customer doesn't have to go through any exhaustive approval cycle for getting that into a CR and get it approved. So that's one of the recent uh, specific uh, activity that we have done. So similarly, there are a lot of uh, use cases. For example, for uh, the same industry, there was a specific um, requirement on the uh, PD-11 process where um, in SAP, it's been introduced as part of the payroll, uh, the clients and stuff. So that has been taken care. We have analyzed the HRST support packages uh, where it is specific for industry like this. And, uh, you know, what happens is like the field service employees, when they run around uh, meeting different customers, uh, they had to claim their car elements, their 
SQL events and stuff. So that was taken as part of the enhancement pack. And there are specific functionalities um, given as part of HR support service pack. So we have implemented that. We have added additional enhancement to cater uh, Yorkshire water utility specific business need, and we have implemented those. So those are a couple of examples that I've cited, but happy to ha um, share some more use cases after uh, if you're interested to know more. Thank you. I'll move on to the next question. Uh, does your company work on ticket based support model for few major modules? If yes, explain the model. Right. Um, right. So when we take the ticket based uh, support model, for example, uh, we analyze the trend of tickets. If there is a kind of history that's been uh, um, in, in the system over a period of time, and we allocate specific FTEs. For example, on an average, if I take uh, out of 50 tickets, I'm, I'm just quoting an example here, I may get a volume of four or uh, five critical in a month. Um, in a month, if I take 50 tickets, for example, and five high and say 10 medium and 10 low, we will be able to cater this within the monthly volume of the FTE allocation and the tickets can be handled specific to modules. If the customer is specific about uh, going for a support for these modules, then our um, support model cater to the number of tickets that we are solving. So we price the uh, commercials based on the number of tickets, which is primarily the expectation from the customer. And that will define also the SLAs, the number of highs, number of mediums, um, uh, number of critical tickets, which will be addressed within that bucket. So it, this is very, very, uh, very, very unique. And uh, this can be uh, tailor made based on the customer needs and the pricing can always uh, be flexible in when we, when we arrive at the ticket based model as well. So that's the flexibility we bring it on. So next question, can you elaborate on some of the innovations used in your current AMS engagement? Yeah, I think I've answered this as part of my first question. Um, right, I'll go to the next question. As the whole world is moving towards solution on tablets and phones, what suggestion and solution we can expect by using S4 and migrating it to S4? Um, yes, with the Fiori framework, I think the Fiori on Web Dispatcher is very much adaptable um, to and catered to uh, tablets where you can use your mobile and um, tablets on the go to use your uh, Fiori applications. Um, I think this primarily will be used in uh, field applications areas where if I take again a utility ex example, a customer have to service somebody um, uh, in gas or electricity where they have to go and repair a boiler service where they can go log uh, the, when the customer take the ticket it will be assigned to the servicing agent the servicing agent meet the customer do the service maintain the details in the tablet get the feedback and signature from the customer as a, as an acknowledgement and then that will straight away updated in the system and this will all be in the connected network. So that's a, with the S4, that's very much possible. And we have done it for customers and even for first group. I mean, they've been using uh, our um, S4 theory applications in mobile. So that's very much possible. Though. Move on to the next question. I think it's about it. Um, I don't see any more questions in the list. Uh, but nevertheless, if you still have any more questions, please feel free to uh, send us an email or a message to us. Uh, we are happy to take it forward. And thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for your time uh, for this evening. Sorry uh, if it take a bit longer. I think one minute longer. 
So for any details, you can contact Parameshwaran, who are earlier part of this call. Uh, you can contact me, uh, Jagadish, my name, and these are our offices and contact details. Once again, thank you so much for joining everyone. Thank you.